Today I wanted to talk about nurse practitioner residencies and or fellowships, which are kind of the same, but kind of different. Boss is us. When I was first researching going back to school, I typed into Google nurse practitioner palliative care. How do I become one? And what came up was an Emory nurse practitioner fellowship in palliative care. And I was like, hmm, what is this? Is this part of the program? Do I have to do this? Is this, this is an extra year? What do I have to do this in order to be a palliative care MP? They're very confusing in the beginning when you don't know what they are. And when I did a shallow dive, I was like, no, no, they're elective. Why would I do that? I've already spent, I'm, I'm about to spend blood, sweat, time, tears, money, psychological stress, emotional stress, mental stress, physical stress. Have I said stress enough? Because <laughs> there's a lot. So why would I then commit myself to another six months to a year? Uh -uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, friends. So I like to know. But as I grew to know more people who've done these programs and done a little bit deeper dive into what they are and what they can offer, I think they're a phenomenal opportunity. So don't be like me. Don't do shallow dives. Do a deep dive. So let's do a deep dive into what a nurse practitioner residency and or fellowship is in this video. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. I'm an RNNP mentor, interview strategist, and content creator. Welcome to the channel. When I use the word fellowship, I'm using it ubiquitously to describe fellowships and residencies, and I shouldn't because they're different. But I find that most people have this issue. It's a little bit confusing in reality what they actually are, but there are nuances that make them just a little bit different. So I wanna talk about what they both are, how they're different, and the type of people that are best served by them, and then the pros and cons of why you may want to do it. Okay, what both of them represent is postgraduate training. All right, this is the person who has finished their nurse practitioner program and is looking for more. They need more time, more experience. So these programs both provide that. They are both similar in that they are highly structured, highly regulated. These are accredited programs. Most of the institutions that offer these get some type of funding in order to provide them. So you know somebody's making them follow rules. So what they're offering you is what they're really guaranteeing for you. Otherwise, they can't maintain the program. There's a lot that goes into these programs. There are often people who, as part of their, like, their whole job is to run these programs or it's like they work half clinical time and half time working on this program. So there are dedicated people to helping you navigate this program. So they, to me, one of the big benefits in them is that they are offering you highly individualized experiences, um, lots of experience in the field that you want to go into. And it's going to be sort of a loving, nurturing environment. You know, you're not coming out of graduation, going into a potentially toxic work environment or an environment where you're not giving appropriate orientation or expected to roll into it completely confident day one and you're not. So they're going to kind of baby step you into it. Now, having said that, they're hard. They're not easy programs, but you know you're going to get top tier, highly individualized, highly focused attention on your training in making you the best nurse practitioner you can be. You're gonna, th these programs take you from being a novice to being competent and or confident in a very abbreviated time frame. Most of us get out of school, we may have a little bit of background at the bedside, we may have a little bit of background through our clinical experiences or work experiences with the specific group that we're going to work for, but there's still a huge learning curve. There's still a big gap. I tell most people, it's about six months before you're not white knuckling it on the way into work. It's about a year before you feel fairly competent and it's about three years before you feel confident. Now this varies based on specialty. Some of the very narrow niche focus stuff, it, you can do it in a much quicker time frame. but the generalist type of programs, primary care, internal medicine, hospital medicine, critical care, all of these take a while to get all of the experiences you need in order to feel confident in this particular specialty and caring for these people because there's just such a wide variation in what you're gonna see. Because these programs are so highly regulated, they have to, they are required to provide you with a certain number of lectures. You have like classwork, like programs that you have to do outside of work. They're gonna offer you um, different foci of rotations. I think some of them require, I mean, depending on the specialty, you have to have certain like core rotations you have to do, and then some of them offer you electives so that if your particular focus is in one area, you can choose complementary um, services to rotate through with. They also have to give you sim labs, they have to give you guaranteed patient census, so you're gonna 
be able to see the amount of people you need to see to get the experience you need, guaranteed amount of procedures. So you are guaranteed to get the experience that you need to be up and running very quickly. It's just a highly structured, supportive environment in which to start your career in. So let's talk about how they differ. Okay. A resident, okay, both of these are going to have an area of interest. They're going to have a specialty, a focus, but fellowships are going to be even more sub-sub focused. <laughs> so a residency is sort of a generalized specialty with rotations in a lot of different complementary service lines. And a fellowship is like highly focused on this one specific thing. So fellowships can be a little shorter. Most of them are around six months. I've seen some that last 12 months. I've not seen any beyond that. Residencies are almost always gonna be 12 months. I think they started out in the beginning being six month programs and they have expanded to um, make it a full year, at least of the research that I've done. Hey friend. Are you in the market for a new or possibly even your first job? And are you frustrated by a lack of offers? If this is the case, one of two things is happening. Either the competition has better qualifications than you do, or the competition is interviewing better than you are. And guess which of these two you have control over? That's right, just yourself. You and yourself. You only have control over what you do in life. Now, what I find is that most nurses and NPs were never taught how to interview, nor have they researched how to do it. We need to take a number from our friends at the School of Business who know how to sell themselves. We can do it too. I help people by offering mock interviews where they get to practice their skills, and I also offer an on-demand digital course that is 19 videos totaling three hours and nine PDFs. It's gonna walk you through start to finish how to get ready for and deliver the performance of your career. It is going to be the most lucrative investment you could possibly make for the entirety of your career. The return on investment is phenomenal. Y'all, I've been doing mock interviews for a year. I am extremely proud to tell you that I have a 100% success rate within two months, and that's really only because of one outlier. Everyone has gotten a job offer, and it brings me such joy to know that people are landing their dream jobs. I'm not talking even like the second option. They're landing their dream jobs, people. There is a way to perfect this skill and you really have to invest in it. I know you're tired of studying, but it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of preparation. You will alleviate a lot of the nerves and fears and you'll be able to show your personality and they will be wanting to offer you a job before you even leave the room. I can't tell you how many of my clients have told me they have heard those words. So if you're in the market for some help, please go check out my website at freemp.com to either schedule a mock interview or look into the digital course if that's right for you. Thanks for listening and thanks so much for watching my videos. I wanted to run through real quickly just a list of what I saw recently when I did a search on what is available out there because it's fascinating to me the specialties that fellowships are offered in. Um, it's, it's really changed and grown a whole lot since when I graduated. So these are just some like little ideas that I've seen lately. And um, I have old eyes, so for your viewing pleasure, here are my readers. Um, surgical, peds, critical care, uh, multiple foci of critical care. Uh, hepatology, urology, nephrology, dermatology, pain management, integrative medicine, orthopedics, y'all, genetics, genetics. Vanderbilt has a genetics nurse practitioner fellowship. Wow. Um, I went to Emory, so Emory offers um, quite a few as well. They have a cardiothoracic surgery fellowship, cardiac critical care fellowship, they have a critical care residency, hospice palliative care fellowship, urology residency, urology. Um, and Winship Fellowship, which if you're not familiar with Emory, um, I didn't do a fellowship with them, but I did do a ro um, very intense rotation through Winship Oncology Center when I was at the school, and it is phenomenal. If you are interested in oncology, you really, really should check out what training is available to you at Emory. Um, and there are a couple of websites, um, links I'm gonna put down below that can be helpful. There is one, um, graduatenursingedu.com. This has a listing like state specific and specialty specific. It is by no means comprehensive, but it's a great start to see what um, institutions, and most of these are offered by academic hospitals. Um, I have seen some that seem to be d driven by large healthcare corporations. Um, it's very interesting. There's also something called No Gap that I believe, I didn't write it down, but I, I, I feel like this was one I looked at. Um, primary care offers a lot of rural care. Um, obviously there's, there's money to be had and there are um, positions to be had in rural areas. So if you have a focus on that, there's a lot available to you.
Um, I am local to Georgia. There is a group called United Advanced Practice Registered Nurses. I'm talking about them on here because I recently saw an event listing for a Pacific Northwest virtual like career fair for fellowships, for MP fellowships, which I thought was fascinating. So I assume it's like a, you know, virtual face-to-face -face, like you would at like a college fair. Um, so many different programs there representing what they have to offer and asking you to apply, which I think is a great way to see what's out there. By the time of this airing, this is gonna be over, but you just follow along, you know, maybe follow their page and see if something comes up next year. I'm sure it will. I just trying to help y'all find resources <laughs> to see what's out there. Okay, now let's go one by one why I think these programs are so great. Number one, these are a great bridge for, for any educational gap that you may have. If you went to a quick school, a cheap school, a, a school that had you do online modules asynchronously and you never even saw or spoke to a teacher, this would be a great program for you. Any skills gap you may have. So maybe you didn't have a lot of experience at the bedside or you had really not great clinical rotations and you haven't had a lot of face-to-face, one-on-one time with a preceptor acting as a nurse practitioner, these are a great program for you. Dedicated and assured attention to your unique and specific needs. These programs are great for that. Job acquisition, which has multiple sub bullet points I'll put here. This is hands down the best way to get a job. If you are in a competitive, AKA saturated, which you know I hate that word. If, it's, if you are in a market where you can't move and it is very hard to find jobs, you are guaranteed to get a job. Guarantee. Gar you remember that, what was that Cajun cook guy? What's his name? He said, I guarantee. Okay, I guarantee you're gonna get a job, okay, if you do a ro residency or fellowship from several different viewpoints. Number one, if you do um, 12 rotations, you're going with 12 different teams, you're gonna get job offers from most of them. This is a two-way street working interview. They see what you're like, you see what they're like, you get to extend your working interview for a month long. So you get to hear all the drama about that team. <laughs> you get to find out if they're a good team to work for, how they pay, do they give their vacation time. Like it is ideal for getting behind the scenes. Like it almost feels like spying to find out if this is the right team and specialty for you. Most of the places you rotate through are gonna be looking to hire someone. Or if they're not, they're gonna put you on the back burner. They say, we got something coming up. Because they, if they see you and they like you, they're willing to hire you. Now say you don't wanna stay at this institution or you're moving, you are gonna be the most marketable NP out there. You really are. The only person that's gonna be more marketable than you if you go head to head with someone in a job um, application process is gonna be the person that has years and years of experience in this particular field and or they're just super fun to work with and they can demonstrate that in a one hour interview. But on paper, you are a really really good option because not only you know even if even though you're a new grad quote unquote you've had a year of training by dedicated teachers who love to teach who guarantee again all those things I told you about before that are required hiring institutions know about all that and so they can rest assured that you have been trained to the top level of your scope of practice so you're gonna be an ideal candidate it's gonna be your spot to lose Oh, and the last bullet point, which I forgot to probably segue into a different part there, but most of these residencies have like core rotations you have to do, but many of them offer you like electives. Like say during your primary care residency, you decide you really like dermatology. They may allow you to spend more time with this subspecialty or complementary services that go along with it like oncology. So you really get to like custom tailor your experience, which I think is just so beneficial. Sounds great, right? Right? What's the catch? Well, there's always a catch because nothing in life is ever all good, right? <laughs> so let's talk about the main cons. Okay, the cons number one, two, and three are that it's hard to get into. Hard to get into, these are very competitive. Number one, because there's not a lot of places that offer these programs, so they're hard to come by. Number two, these are highly coveted programs. The word is out, everybody knows that these are great, so everybody wants to be a part of one. And number three, the programs that you can find have very few spots. So if there's not a lot of options out there for you, 
everybody wants to be a part of it and they only have two spots, it's gonna be hard to get into. So they are competitive. Con number two, which is a pretty big con in my, in my mind, is that they don't pay. They don't pay. Think medical residents, they make like $3 an hour. <laughs> You're gonna make a little bit more than that, but it's not gonna be what you would make if you went out fresh out of school and started your first job. Most of them offer around $60,000 a year, but it's not just a straight $60,000 a year because you're, this is my con number three, you're required to work a lot more. So hourly breakdown is gonna be even less than a straight $60,000 a year job. Most of them require 60 hour work weeks and it may not all be like five, 12 hour shifts. It may be a combination of shifts plus lectures, plus class time, plus sim time. Some of them have all that added on after you complete your hours. So the big cons on these programs are this, they're hard to get into, they don't pay well, and you're gonna work a lot more hours. Those are some pretty big cons. So ultimately, I think these programs are ideal for people who didn't get a lot of time at the bedside before they went back to school, went to a crappy school, don't feel like they can um, get out there, lack a lot of the confidence or competence that a normal new nurse practitioner would have, which we all have a lot of that, okay? Some of that is very, very normal. Um, number four, are in a highly saturated market and can't find anything. Now you've got to weigh the balances of what's most important to you and your unique situation in life. For me, I was kind of torn about this type of program, but ultimately I decided not to pursue it and it was the right choice for me. But I have known several people, I've had former students, I have colleagues I work with, I have former classmates that went through the program that are all phenomenal, phenomenal nurse practitioners. So these programs do exactly what they're designed to do. They take you from novice to expert in an abbreviated time frame, and do it in a way that is kind and easy on you. And I won't say it's easy on you. I can't say it's easy on you, but it's more, I mean, I think most people are willing to accept a rigorous program if it's designed to build you up and make you stronger and not just a um, toxic kind of dog pile upon you. These programs offer you that. And that's all I have to say on fellowships. They're a win-win.